Hey YouTubers, and welcome back to another Real Numbers podcast video. Now, for this one in particular, I've got with me MJ from Geeklist TV. MJ, why don't you say hello to everybody? Hello. Anyway, guys, so today we're going to be talking about anime movies in Hollywood and whether or not uh, we're seeing maybe the humble beginnings of, I guess... I guess their rise to stardom or power, or at least a little bit of prominence in Hollywood, or whether this is just, you know, a couple studios taking a little bit of risky situations in order to maybe see what works, but maybe it doesn't. I don't really know. So, interestingly enough, when you're seeing this, but when we're recording this, this is Thursday when we're recording this, it's coming out on Monday. So, we're going to see, hopefully, you would have gone out and watched Ghost in the Shell. Hopefully that money that movie makes a lot of money, but probably not. Uh, <laughs> uh, predictions right now for it, although like this is going to be old, and like you feel free to be like, Mark, you're stupid because it was a complete bomb, huge success, or right in the road, you're completely right. I don't know. Uh, you know, anyway, but uh, they're saying like anywhere between twenty five and thirty two million. Uh, not necessarily the best showing, but hey, it's been a really, really crowded, very busy. And overly successful March, something that we're not necessarily used to, especially at this part, uh, point of the year. So uh, so we have this particular film coming out. And lo and behold, with that, we're finally getting, we're actually even getting more information about the long gesturing project over at Warner Brothers about Akira. <laughs> And uh, big story today, although it's probably not true, but big story today was... Warner Brothers was courting and discussions were happening for Jordan Peele, uh, director of Get Out, or from Key and Peele, to direct Akira as his first big budget temple film. And I mean, that's interesting enough. Maybe we'll talk about it a little later. But it seems funny to me that we're actually gearing up or Hollywood's gearing up multiple studios, studios to make and or produce huge big budget films based on very critically acclaimed, overly successful classics of uh, anime films, films or series or manga, or whatever. And it, it, it just seems weird. Like It seems like a very weird business move to me because these might have huge, like be hugely successful, have their niche audience that are very, very loyal. We'll see this no matter what. But at the same time, uh, both those properties long gesturing are not necessarily the most relevant uh that they've that they've ever have been or could be when they could be making movies like you know naruto or dragon ball or something like that even though a lot of people kind of say dragon ball evolution was not a good movie mark why are you bringing that up well uh, that's what we're talking about so i know i've been kind of gabbing along uh mj what are your thoughts on this do you feel like we're seeing something here that's going to be uh, maybe re more relevant in the next coming years, and you and I are basically talking about this uh, before the bubble kind of starts growing, or do you think that this is just a couple of one-offs that just happen to be going around and talk talked about at the same time of each other? I like how you're just like, oh, Mark, why are you bringing up Dragon Ball? Oh, well, that's what we're talking about, so fuck you, get out the video. <laughs> you don't like it. <laughs> but no, don't leave the video, guys. Stay on the video. Uh, but yeah, I can see what you mean by that. It could just be like a, a few one-off films, and they're just taking up some older, uh, I guess, manga, if you will, some older uh, stories, you know, like Ghost in the Shell and obviously like Akira. So I could see them doing that. But at the same time, though, I mean, Dragon Ball and Naruto, they're both kind of old. Dragon Ball, of course, uh, making its well in the 90s, you know, and then, of course, actually his debut in the uh, late 80s. So I can see them actually going after Dragon Ball as well. People talk about evolution being a bomb, which... Yeah, it was. People hated it. People, I've seen videos where people burnt the fucking DVD. <laughs> so, oh my god! <laughs> there why, you go. Why would that. you even buy it, guys? I mean, I I appreciate you you supporting uh, movies, but why would you even buy it? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I've seen people actually uh, just buy it to you know fuck it up and shit and break it and all that. But anyways, the point being is that. I think when you look at Ghost in the Shell, now, obviously, I haven't seen it yet, but I have read reviews, and most of the reviews that I've read are pretty positive, and that's actually very happy for me, and I'm actually excited. Now, that leads me to think about this one topic here, and that's the fact that if they really are pushing more anime, if that's where they're going, if this ain't just like a one-off, we're just going to do a few films, you know, um... If these actual studios, are, if they're gearing up, like, if they saw the rise in the comic book you know, uh, stuff, you know, they want to actually go after anime, which they t uh, totally could, you know, it's weird because, I mean, 
just think about it. Man of Steel, and we talked about this off air. Man of Steel had a budget of 225 million. I'm not. I'm pretty sure you've seen this before, but in the comment section, if you go like into those uh, Zod versus Superman fights, you would see you would see stuff like this is how a DBZ film <laughs> should have been made, or you know, uh, this is how this should have happened. Which I can totally see where they're coming from. They're talking about those fast paced effects, you know, like Superman flying from one city to the other. You know, mm-hmm. I can see why they're like, okay, yeah, this is how a DBZ film should have looked, and Dragon Ball Evolution did not look like this and obviously dragon ball evolution had a budget of around 30 mil so okay but you brought up a good point to me and i want you to elaborate on this if they're doing this if they're actually trying to go after anime and capitalize on this and these other studios want these action franchises they could go after the early parts of naruto which have just as much uh, much action as the later parts just not as crazy there are gigantic 30-foot beasts shooting blasts from their mouths. They're blowing up continents and mountains. And then you look at DB. You brought up the 22nd tournament where there's not too much going on there. There's not many, like, huge beam struggles. There's nothing like the Piccolo Daimao uh, or, I mean, the, excuse me, the Piccolo Jr. beam struggle with Goku, you know, or the the sand stuff where the Gallic Ho against the Kamehameha. There's nothing crazy like that. It's just good old-fashioned, fast-paced martial arts where uh, they could just do that. You know what I mean? Obviously, there were, don't get me wrong, there were a few blasts. Like, we saw the Tri-Beam. We saw the Dodon Ray. We saw stuff like that. But we didn't see anything too crazy. So they could actually go after some of these franchises like early Dragon Ball and early Naruto, which have a ton of action in it. But it's just not too crazy. They don't need fucking a $500 million budget to create these films. They could just do it with, like, around maybe 60 to 80 you know mm-hmm. like I, what are your thoughts on that because uh, you're the one that actually brought that up to me so we want to elaborate more on that yeah i mean i i completely agree i have long i've long stated and i i want to do a more a more in-depth video on a lot of this stuff instead of just doing it here but i guess it doesn't really matter people spill over people don't necessarily watch this particular series so it, it's just an interesting concept to me personally is uh, I feel I feel like they totally messed up with Dragon Ball Evolution. Uh, the the story where to begin the story right there, in my opinion, is you skip the first arc of finding the Dragon Balls. You skip the red. Uh, you, uh, you skip basically training and uh, the Red Ribbon Army stuff and the first tournament, and you just start at the twenty second tournament because it's the most grounded part of that entire story. That's not overly hard to believe, and doesn't require a whole lot of stuff in the process and then eventually you use that very little money hopefully spend and get a lot of money back not only on name recognition but also just the general story and from there you could probably do a sequel uh you know then you do piccolo dime out then you do uh the 23rd tournament to make a really well-rounded trilogy and and then uh from there as your cast grows up and grows older because you probably cast teenagers uh, you have a young father and Goku and the younger people and then you move into you know the Saiyan arc and then the, the Frieza stuff or you do a three film leading up to the Frieza fight and I feel like that's a well rounded trilogy that tells in a complete and whole story uh when it comes to Naruto, I don't know very much about it, but yeah, you have like younger kids that are also have the potential of growing. I mean, to me, it's it seems like an interesting uh, wheelhouse of the the conversation. Really, is you know a lot of people it was one of the things, one of the reasons they actually cast Tom Holland in the new Spider Man roles because uh, they wanted people, Marvel wanted people, and I'm sure Sony did too to be young enough to in order to make six seven eight movies if they you know get the chance if you hire someone you know in their 30s or someone like uh to- or, um, tony stark you know robert Downey jr was in his 40s when they actually started doing iron man movies i mean yeah he could still do it well into the future but at the same time the guy can only do it for so long uh, before like Affleck, forty four, right? Now. Yeah, he was in his forties when he did the first. Yeah, Batman, and then, so and then, yeah, you also have Hugh Jackman basically being aged out of the the, the aged out of the Wolverine role. But you know, to his credit, you know, they allowed he got to do t- nine films uh, with cameos yeah. being some of them. But yeah, he got to do nine films. It's probably what they want from all of their people. Same yeah, same things can be said. Uh, especially when you look at the long-running Shonen series that are basically comic books in and of themselves with huge domestic and international possibility if they do them right. Uh, you do the same thing with Dragon Ball and Naruto. Uh, uh, you can also do Bleach, but Bleach, they don't necessarily grow up quick, but you could you can do some clever 
maneuvering with that story and then you can also do the same thing with fairy tale but let's not talk about fairy tale right now uh <laughs> um, I, I you know and and i it's just interesting to me that there the, the the potential seems to be there but really i think what's holding them back is yeah i feel like a lot of people still have a bad sour taste in their mouth when it comes to dragon ball evolution not dragon ball's fault fault it's it's you know the whole blame is uh on fox for taking that property not knowing what to do with it and just shitting out a film for property rights reasons and wanting to get a film made or just for sellability on the name it on the name alone and it's it's just i feel like we're at a time at a critical junction in our kind of entertainment environment where in order for even though uh superhero movies are the the new thing when it comes to television even i mean superheroes are taking over television superheroes are taking over movies i feel like we need to start branching out into stuff that's a little bit more still superhero centric still kind of of the same medium that popularized uh superhero comics in the in the first place but look to stories that are kind of i guess different and more and more in line with what people might be interested i mean people didn't know that they were interested in comic books until comic book movies made it popular and socially acceptable the same can be true for 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 manga and anime and uh you know we could be with with them making ghosts in the shell with them still considering and talking and spending money on trying to get an akira movie made uh, we could still be in that forefront and at that critical junction like we were in the in the late 90s uh, where just because Batman and Robin got made in 97 or 96, I can't really remember at this point, but just because <laughs> that movie got made and you think the entire genre is dead, all you need is a couple years and you can reinvent yourself to a, to the extent where you become the biggest name in entertainment. And I think that there are some there are some there definitely some good stories from this particular medium that we're not necessarily exploring that could be amazing in the long run and when we have places like Lionsgate for example who's been reeling and I'm sure is very happy with the 40 million dollars they made opening weekend which I wasn't even expecting a lot of people weren't expecting that was the high level of expectation really the you know in its dreams this movie's going to open up with 40 million dollars uh I'm sure they're happy about that, that this, I guess, weird kind of Super Sentai Power Rangers property, uh, something else that started from Japan, opened up to that much where they're sitting there going, well, okay, maybe this wasn't a huge flop, and maybe we can. Maybe not six, they're probably not. They're still probably having discussions about six movies, but uh, they're probably looking at it as like, okay, we can make a light profit out of this film if it just picks up internationally a little bit. It's not necessarily doing very well right now. But if this picks up just a little bit, we can do another one and try harder and people might be more willing to accept and watch this stuff. If they're looking for movies after you know the YA bubble burst with Hunger Games and then the Divergent movies just completely going off the rails and making the, the last film a television film and then the Burning Trail movies uh, over at Fox can't even get made because the, the actor got hurt and who knows when they're actually going to start releasing that and i think it's earlier later this year but don't quote me i feel like with that bubble bursting with superheroes on the rise you need a different story you need a different take and if they want action franchises especially over at uh Lionsgate, well they bought the rights to lion or to naruto last year and they're just gonna sit on it and i just i i have a problem with that i feel like it would be an interesting concept for them to try to make a long-running series six films out of naruto if they're looking for something that would do well for them so i know i've been like i said i've been kind of gabbing really ranting but what are your thoughts on that do you think any thoughts on any of that yeah, I mean, definitely, since Lion King's own Naruto, not just sit on your uh, ass, you know what I mean? Actually, do something with this, because you can actually create a legitimate 
action franchise like I mentioned before, you don't even have to put in a hundred million dollar budget on it because a lot of what happens in Naruto isn't that extreme, especially in the beginning. And especially if you want to start off with a young actor, you can start during the beginning of Naruto, and then you can obviously grow them through, you know, five to eight films. You know, if, you, if it, depending on the success of each film, you know. So I can definitely see your point on there, the fact that they own them and they're not going to do too much with it. But if they're craving for an action franchise, or they want something to actually compete against these other uh, superhero uh, genres, and they can actually do that. You know, I don't see anything wrong with it. I. I Obviously, anime, though, does... It's not just Dragon Ball Evolution, it's anime in general, you know? Like, people will bring up the whole Speed Racer adaptation. People will bring up so many different adaptations. It's, okay, I get your point, but at the same time, it's like, still... Superhero movies had stinkers as well. It, you know what I mean? Not every single superhero movie that came out was an X-Men 1 or X-Men 2 quality level of film. You know, each one, so it wasn't. So, you know, I just don't see the point of that, you know? They should at least do something with the... Uh, they have Naruto, like you just said. They have the fucking rights to it already. They should yeah. at least start something with it, you know? Yeah, it, it, it doesn't make it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me when they do this. And, and honestly, what it, what it really is business-wise is these studios buy these rights to stuff that they'll probably never make. And it's not necessarily because they intend to make them. I'm not saying they're doing this with Naruto. But it's not because they don't intend to make it. But sometimes... Uh, they do it just to spite things, and they get it just so it won't get made. So, uh, you know, for a certain amount of years, you obviously, you don't buy the rights to it. You don't have it forever. You basically have a, a set amount of time in your contract that allows you to actually buy the movie or make the movie. And that's why it's true for everything. It's true for comic books. It's true for movie or comic books and, uh, and books and anything, like television show adaptations, anything, because... Uh, it's why we'll get and we'll never stop getting Spider-Man movies, <laughs> and why we'll never stop getting. I mean, even if if unless they're complete dicks, uh, Fox will probably keep making, uh, or if they're yeah if they're complete dicks, they'll keep making Fantastic Four movies shoving down our throat just because they have to or the rights revert. So, uh, I think they're setting on they're probably sitting on something really interesting when it comes to Naruto. Fox is sitting on something when it comes to Dragon Ball. Uh, I would personally, I feel like one thing they might be doing is just allowing enough time to pass before evolution. Now, you might say, like, oh, enough time has passed, but you never really know. Uh, the public consciousness is really, especially with the internet, is really uh, long-lasting and unforgiving about bad experiences when it comes to movies. And you see that time and time again with big movies coming out that start dwindling over time. I mean, we've seen it time and time again. You've, uh, you see the slow and utter de uh, regression of the pirate movies or even just uh or how how the public reacted to the amazing spider-man reboot after you know so quickly after the toby Maguire films or something we just do not yeah we do not take this stuff well <laughs> like we don't like change and we don't like we we don't like movies that are bad so when you see movies like you know, when you see movies like Planet of the Apes and or uh, Rise of the Planet of the Apes or Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or something like that, where you have a legit good movie and you come in, you want the next one to be really good. Uh, another good example with that and how audience reacted from one movie to another is the amazing uh, performance and like respect at a, or, uh, respect and cr critical acclaim of the Hangover movie leading into unprecedented success for the Hangover 2 and just complete and utter failure for the, th the third film. People got mad and they weren't going to take a chance again. So it happens time and time again. And I feel like at this point, the one thing we have to look forward to really is this maybe the, the current success of hopefully of Ghost in the Shell because I feel like that would be more I guess in line with what they're doing and how they're going to maybe parlay that into more and more anime films because it is directly an anime film but personally uh, the Power Rangers movie gave me a lot of hope uh, with that success that they found if they do another one and it continues to do well I would imagine that Lionsgate having the rights to Naruto would probably give us the first big budget uh anime movie where we're getting something where they're trying to adapt it in a way that was is at least hopeful and you know uh true to the original vision but i mean that's a lot of ifs and maybes 
Yeah, it really is. But, <laughs> I mean, like, you did bring up the Power Rangers success. So, hopefully, after maybe an, uh, maybe one or two... I mean, even before then, I, I would just think that if Ghost in the Shell does well domestically, and then you just, I just feel like, man, Lion Gate already has the rights to it. I mean, they're sitting on Dragon Ball with Fox. Might as well just do something with it, you know? Mm -hmm. It can't hurt. I, I mean, they're gonna... <laughs> I would like to think they would at least make back their budget, you know, what they spent on the film. You know, obviously, most movies do. That's a big misconception. When people say a movie bombs, they don't mean that it made worse than their budget. It actually probably didn't make more than their budget because that's probably what it did. But it just means that the movie sucked, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean that the movie, like, bank bankrupt the company, you know? <laughs> Nothing like that, so... But, um... No, I... I that's like, pretty I'm, much all I have to say. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, you're right. Like, movies don't... As much as everyone wants to say, and it's true, but uh, that's actually a fun little topic. Uh, you know, when you say and you read reports, it's like, oh, you know, uh, John Carter of Mars like lost two hundred million dollars for Disney. It did uh, initially because movies are loss leaders. Movies do not make up the amount of money. Like even a movie that comes in, like Avengers movie or Beauty and the Beast, it's inevitably going to make over a billion dollars worldwide. It's not that those movies don't make money. They do. But most movies uh, most movies come in uh, with large budgets. Take Power Rangers as a really good example. They spent anywhere between, in conflicting reports, again, uh, anywhere between $100 million to $125 million making this movie. Not to mention everything that they're going to get from, uh, you know, every everything that they spent on marketing. And that movie had a very, very substantial marketing campaign. People, are they spent money <laughs> uh, making sure that people were aware of this film. And it was very, very apparent, even if you weren't necessarily paying attention. And so, uh, you know, with that and the, the extensive marketing campaign, so you have about $125 million in, plus maybe 80 to $100 million in uh the marketing so you sit there and go okay well the movie only needs to make uh it, just being honest like the movie probably needs to make 500 million not right now but at least in its lifetime gross and you're talking about everything you're not just talking about how much money the movie makes uh in terms of the theater or or, or uh, you know box office which is starting to look increasingly like maybe 250 million at max. You would imagine that okay, well that's probably more than what they they said it cost to make. Not necessarily true, uh, because while theaters don't make a lot of money on tickets, it's about a 90-10 90-10 split the first weekend, and it slowly moves in the other direction until it's basically the same way but opposite. So. A lot of money is made through tickets in the first weekend. And internationally, a lot of movie money is made internationally, but the, the profit sharing is really different because a lot of the studios, even though, or a lot of the theater chains even, uh, even though they're big worldwide companies, they don't have the power or money it would take to distribute a movie worldwide. So what they do is they partner with other companies around the world who eventually uh, take that give it to theaters and create like a more profit sharing split. So when you have places like China, uh, where, you know, the second largest film market quickly becoming the first largest film market in the entire world, uh, the United States or Hollywood in particular only has about a 25% share of the amount of money that makes. So, so you break it down and you realize that they're not making a whole lot of money. Best case scenario, uh, when you came, came in, you started looking at how much money world of warcraft made you know world of warcraft made uh about 230 million so let's just kind of make it 250 million just for ease right so you're looking at only 63 million uh in overall profits from universal legendary pictures so it's it's split up in a really interesting way but like i said if it makes around 250 million you're probably going to see a film sequel because it, you also have to calculate uh you know syndication rights which is also a huge part of it uh even more le least increase less increasingly so than it was maybe a decade decade and a half ago but home video sales is also kind of a juggernaut when it comes to making money for movies uh not to mention toys for something like this is also a huge money maker so 
the movie will make money the same way that all movies make money. It just takes a long time. And when they have to wait years and years and years, then it ends up actually costing them money. Uh, but it's not that the movie doesn't actually make its initial cost back. They just need it to make it quick enough in order to make something actually profitable. So I know it was a little weird aside for this particular conversation, but I thought it was interesting enough to kind of talk about. And... <laughs> So anyway, like, yeah, like, guys, I, I really want there to be more anime movies. And like I've said in the previous, I, I've said this previously in another video, I really feel that we should come together as an anime community, if that's what we are, if you like Dragon Ball, Naruto, uh, Bleach, One Piece, or Yu Yu Hakusho, or even just uh, Ghost in the Shell, if you're just a huge Ghost in the Shell fan, go see these movies. Go see Ghost in the Shell, because you need to show them that even though this isn't necessarily your particular, you know, this isn't what exactly you want, uh, nothing speaks louder than money when it comes to the business of filmmaking and the business of ad adapting stories. And, you know, just because a lot of people probably didn't want to see Spider-Man or a lot of people didn't want to see, I guess, a lot of people really didn't want to see uh x-men even though it did do well it didn't do amazingly well it didn't destroy the box office like spider-man did just because those movies didn't break the bank uh they did well enough in order for another studio and even the same studio to take another risk and now look at where we are we're at a decade and a half of, we're at 15 years of literally superhero dominance because something did better than it was like expected to and it became the cornerstone of our entire entertainment industry not to mention that and nostalgia and all that stuff so if you like anime the best way that you can show them that you want more anime content and hopefully something really good down into the like down the line is to show them with your wallet and i know a lot of people might have problems with that a lot of people are going to avoid uh anime movies or talk go buy about dragon ball evolution no god no even Dragon Ball Evolution made a profit, by the way. But anyway, like guys, I, I'm gonna probably end it there, um, unless MJ has anything to say. They see me rolling. Oh God! Hits hit it. He stopped in time and gonna hit me in the sternum. <laughs> oh my God! I actually that, wrote that. I thought that was really kind of funny, though, isn't it? He stopped in time and he's gonna hit you in the sternum. Chompa think he can see me lean, but my power level ain't even to be seen. Where you open your eye and you can't be. Oh shit! I'm getting off, man. <laughs> I actually want to do more of that in the future. I I wish I was good enough to do it uh faster because I would really like to do Dragon Ball song parodies like that. But anyway, that's a completely different topic. Guys, we're going to catch you on the next Real Numbers video. I hope you did like this. Tell us what you think about this in the comment section below. Uh, do you want more anime movies? Did you see Ghost in the Shell? What are your thoughts on it? Just kind of mini review in the comment section. Please make sure to go check out MJ. Make some really awesome content for you. Give you ear orgasms. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, we'll catch you all later, man. Bye.